All right, so I'm starting an audio tutorial series designed on explaining the fundamentals of Unity's native audio package. So this video is gonna be all about the audio mixer and the different foundations you need to know to understand audio engineering for game development. So all I have here is an empty project. And inside this empty project is a single audio clip, which I have from a great sound effect package called Storyteller Sound Effect Package, available in Unity's Asset Store. The library has hundreds of high quality, professionally engineered audio clips that tell your game story with ease. You can check out the package by clicking the card on screen now or finding it in the description below. The best place to start when explaining audio engineering in game development is with audio clips. So audio clips contain audio data, big surprise. But that data is basically what is recorded or what is created in other tools. And then we bring those effects into Unity. So if I click my sci-fi transition effect, I can see a variety of different editing options in the inspector. The first is force to mono and force to mono really enables a multi-channel track to be played as a mono track, which means, well, to explain what it means, I first have to explain what the difference between stereo and mono channels are. So mono channels or the basic idea of a mono track was created when we had things like phonographs. Uh, phonographs have a single audio output and so the entire track has to be formatted for that single output. Now multi-track channels or stereo channels came along as technology developed and they allow the depth of sound to occur in a single audio clip. So multi-channel tracks allow for left and right tracks to create this effect of a vehicle passing. So that's the basic idea. I can't say that I've ever had a use for forcing an audio track to be a mono track, but it is an option. So then we have this normalize option, which is grayed out by default. And we only need to use that if we force a track to be monolithic. And otherwise, we don't really have to worry about it. So then we have this load in the background option, which allows us to load this clip on a separate thread without blocking the main thread. So basically this would be really useful if we need to load a, a lot of audio data right at the beginning of a scene. So like if we have a cut scene with an animation and we need audio to go along with that animation and of course be loaded right at the exact same time so that you know, we don't have any other issues, this would be a great way to, to do that. And then we have this last option here, which is ambisonic. Uh, and we can use that to uh, encode our audio clips, formatting them so that they can be rotated based on the audio source in our scene. And this would be really good for things like virtual reality if we needed to play a sound behind someone versus in front of them. So after that we have a bunch of compression and quality settings here that are all pretty standard. If I navigate to the bottom of the inspector with the audio clip selected, I can expand this bar to reveal the audio waveform. And I can play the clip by clicking this little triangle here. So next, I will open the audio mixer by clicking the window tab, navigating to audio, and selecting audio mixer. So in the audio mixer window, we have this mixer section and this little plus icon here. So let's get started and click this plus icon to add a new mixer. And I'll just name that mixer main. Mixers allow us to apply various effects and filters on audio sources that are playing our audio clips. Snapshots set values for all parameters in the mixer, mainly used for replicating other audio mixer groups quickly. We have audio groups that we can use to sort audio sources, 
so that we can apply the same effects to alike game objects in a consistent way. So that we then have views which are used to save the visibility state of a current mixer group. So let's explore the group section a little more considering it's likely what you'll be interacting with the most. I have this master group which is automatically generated when creating the mixer. But to add another group I can click this little plus icon. I can also right click on the group itself to add a child group which would create a group nesting in whatever is selected. I can add a sibling group and of course I can rename, duplicate, or remove groups as well. So I'll delete these groups and rename the first group I created to effects. I'll also make a sibling group here by right clicking on the effect group and selecting the sibling group. Let's name that transitions. And each group has its own controls and effects, but let's look at the controls here first for the transition group. First, you'll notice this equalizer, which hasn't got anything going on with it right now, and it won't until we play some audio through it. Then we have this S button, which stands for soloing. Soloing activates only the group selected, muting everything else. Then we have the M button, which stands for muting, which, is, which mutes this group. And then we have the B button, which stands for bypass, which is used to bypass all the effects that's currently applied on this group. So that leads us to group effects. Uh, to add an effect, we can simply click the add button at the bottom of the audio group. These are the 13 default effects, which I will be discussing one by one in future videos. So make sure to subscribe to, to catch those. Okay, so just to recap what we've covered so far. Audio clips play through audio sources. We've covered that. Audio listeners are components that listen to audio sources in our scene. They process the audio output from the audio sources and feed them into the mixer, which runs a variety of effects and filters on them, and then hands those off to be heard by the individual player. So let's go ahead and set up the scene so that this chart makes a little more sense. So first I'll create a new game object in my scene by right clicking in the hierarchy and selecting create empty. Next let's name this game object audio transition. First I need to add an audio source component to this game object. So let's click add component and search for audio source. Once we've added the audio source component, you can see this little blue circle gizmo in the scene view here. So I will enable the looping option and drag in the transition group to the output variable in the audio source so that the audio output for this source only plays through the transition group in the mixer. So now I will add the audio clip that I have from my Storyteller's sound effects package. Again, all the high quality effects that you need to communicate your story at a really great price. The card on screen will take you directly to the listing in the Unity Asset Store, but you can also click the link in the description below. I'll decrease the volume here a bit so you don't get blown away by the, the sound for this audio clip. And let's play the scene so that we can see our audio does play correctly. Now you might be wondering, what about the audio listener? I don't remember adding that. That is because if we click the camera here, we can see that cameras come with a default audio listener. And if we disable that audio component, or that audio listener component, you can see the audio immediately stops playing in the mixer. And that basically covers the fundamentals of the audio mixer. So if you want to check out what some of those different effects do, make sure you hit the playlist on the screen now and go check out the 
sound effects, the Storyteller's Sound Effects Library Package in the Unity Asset Store. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.